Okay, let me understand now. Okay, so in the last class, right, we, we talked about the Catalan, at least you have some basic understanding. Did you guys see, see from the back, uh, this slide here? I think it, I don't know whether it's reflection is there or not. Um, but today we'll talk about, later bit about the Ruby Cucumber, basically, and the framework. It's a framework, okay? So I'll give you some overview of the Ruby Cucumber framework, how it works. Uh, and you, you will be able to write actually cucumber test. You wrote the test cases, right? But there is a different way of writing the test that is more pop, getting more popular these days. Okay, which is the called cucumber based testing. And the, the the reason companies are going this cucumber route is because you can easily automate the test. And I, I'll explain you where does it fit in to your uh, process uh, this cucumber test and other. All right, so let me just uh, quickly go over. Um, <clears throat> I think uh, we already talked about what is automation. I think you all understand what is automation and how it works, right? I already covered these slides in the last session. So I'm not gonna go in detail again um, here. We already talked about various test automation tools. So we looked at Catalan as one of the tools, right? Now today we'll talk about uh, selenium and water. Where does it fit in? Okay, because Ruby Cucumber, Cucumber works with the selenium and water. Okay, that's the reason. All other tools are similar to Catalan. So anything that you see here, VSTP, UFT, Test Complete, APM, um, those are like a record and play type of tools. If you know Catalan, you you should be able to pick that up. You can download trial version of. Uh, uh, Test complete. We, this is available, so you can download one month version and uh, play around with the test complete. Okay, it works very similar to Catalan. Um, UFT, as I said, I mean we have videos. We used to teach it here. Uh, if you are interested, we will send you a link so you can at least just see it. It works exactly same as Catalan. Okay, record and play. So, so uh, there is no magic there. Yeah. Tosca, we have video as well. We used to teach in the past. Unfortunately, you cannot get the software now. So we can't really. But if you want to get idea about it, what is it? It's not open source anymore. No, Tosca is the most expensive tool out of this. It's but probably it's open source. Tosca. I'm talking about Tosca. Yeah. Codeless automation tool. Okay. Uh, it's, a, it's a zero coding. You don't need any code. You can't even see the code like you see in the catalog. Right, you go to the script tab and you can see the code. But Tosca, you won't even see the code. No. Okay, there, there is no code. They don't have any free trial. They unfortunately there is no free trial. <laughs> so any, I mean, it's a lot of configuration. It will not run on your machine. Okay, is it similar to Catalan? No, it's not similar to Catalan. It's a different concept. But they have their academy is really good. They have a lot of uh, free things basically on their, just like Catalan Academy, right? They have Tosca Academy and uh, you go through, I think they have beginner level certification, second level, you practice, uh, not practice, at least watch their videos and get uh, clear the certification, at least a beginner level oh. in Tosca. And I can provide you video. Yeah, it does have some installation instruction, but it's a lot of configuration. It may or may not work on your computer, okay? So if you are interested, if you have spare time, I think definitely I would recommend. Uh, um, not many companies use here in Columbus. I know nationwide is pretty big on Tosca, but other than that, nobody else uses it. At least in Columbus, anyway. Okay. Pretty much yeah, most of the Tosca something like that. Companies like nationwide give us transitioning or something like that. Um, I, I didn't get your question. So, like, if I understand, like, 
nationwide. Uh -huh. you, you, they use Tosca and we don't get it free. Yeah. So for us, we are just missing that. Will they give us the KT? Knowledge transfer, you mean in the training? Yeah. Um, I don't think, uh, I, I'm not sure. <laughs> you, you have to try, right? <laughs> go ahead and apply and see what happens. Um, but I would suggest you don't go blank, right? 100% blank. You at least put like hands-on or something, some certification. You uh, you go through the, the academy, get some understanding of, uh, because they're going to ask you in the interviews, right? Mm -hmm. And if you say, yes, I have work, I have some hands-on, I may not have real experience, but as long as you can talk about how it works, what it is, then, uh, then maybe you are good in that case. Just share that link for us, that video. And I'll send you the video. It's on our YouTube channel, right? Uh, I don't know how, if you guys, uh, if you guys saw, I mean, there are plenty of videos, uh, basically for the past sessions as well. And the Tosca is there. So you can just search on it, Tosca. Okay. Uh, and it will pop up. Same thing with the UFT, it will pop up. UFT video uh, as well. UFT, we do have a software, but I don't think it will run unless you have Windows 10 computer. So what makes it that expensive compared to the other competitors? Because the word is codeless automation, mm -hmm. zero coding, zero coding. So it's a different architecture. It's not a record play. You build everything mm -hmm. uh, like kind of like I, I was doing the manual way of going, identifying the elements and building out the test. That's exactly the same approach you will do with the Tosca. Mm -hmm. Basically, you build the repository manually. Instead of recording, you create repository first, and then you write your drag and drop. It's more like a drag and drop, more like graphical user interface type of tool. So you build everything without uh, without code in there. So basically, more user friendly, is it? User friendly, and there is no coding involved. So the training takes less time if yeah. you get hands. Okay. What the video? See, see what you guys think, um, and uh, we can go from there. All right. But today we'll talk about selenium water uh, and how it fits into the automation world. Obviously, you need Ruby programming background in order to do anything with selenium. But we will get you started with the cucumber, which is the first step in writing the automation test using selenium or water. Okay. So we'll do first step, but I'll, I'll explain you what are the different things. And I'll show you actually working test cases as well. All right. Okay. All right. So where does it fit in? Ruby cucumber water selenium. Okay. So it is pretty much, uh, so there is a concept called ATDD. Okay. Which is <laughs> acceptance test driven development. Okay, ATDD testing or ATDD uh, development, acceptance test driven development. So it's more of more of a practice. So it's so in the waterfall world, right? You are writing the requirements. You, they are handing you up documents, and then uh, you, you go analyze it, come up with your test cases afterwards. Same thing. They hand the same document to the developers, and developers will do basically the testing. Uh, developers will do the development. They do the design and development based on the document. So how the ATDD works, right? So it, what ATDD says, it's a collaborative practice where application developers, software users, uh, business users, whatever business analysts, define the acceptance tests or acceptance criteria very early in the application development process. So if you look at the agile process, it works with the agile, okay? ATDD is nothing but the agile concept, agile process concept where everybody is working collaboratively, every step of the process. So when you are, when they are collecting the requirements or writing the user stories, you are, you as a developer are also sitting on the same table as a, with the business user, along with the business analyst and the developers. So everybody is working collaboratively. And so business analyst is responsible for writing the requirements, right? So writing the user stories capturing the stories, what business wants and everything. But developers can also provide feedback at the same time. And you, from quality assurance standpoint, you will also provide feedback at the same time. If something is not clear to you, 
what we are trying to do in the story, then you can just ask the question to the business right there. Instead of you are waiting six months to get their story and uh, going there, right? So as part of that process, um, you have to create some test as well. While you are providing the feedback and you create some test as well, I'll talk about what, what, what this acceptance uh, criteria is and what it looks like and what, what goes in as part of the acceptance criteria and what, what you need to do from the QR standpoint. Okay, but uh, for, remember, for, for now, just remember ATDD is a collaborative practice. Everybody is working together to define the requirement and providing feedback right there up front. Okay, and that's where, that's, that's, that would be the trigger point for your automation, basically, um, as well. So what's the main difference? So you start the automation or start thinking about automation upfront instead of waiting to have a software at the end, basically. So Catalon, can you record the test if you don't have working software? You cannot, right? You, you Because you need the URL, you need all of the, in ATDD, in a part of the ATDD process or acceptance test driven development, you write uh, your acceptance test that will become part of your automation test later on. <clears throat> All right. So as I said, it's a, it's a, it's approach. ATDD is approach working together collaboratively. The goal is to make sure requirements are well defined. The first of all, requirements are well defined, and everybody is on the same page. Because what 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 is you you have seen with that flow? So we give you the document, right? You gonna get the document from business uh, business analyst, and then you analyze the document. You go back and forth so many times. Try to understand well, what does it mean? What does it mean? But if you are sitting with the customer while you are collecting the requirement, do you think you're gonna have the same issue? Probably, probably less issue, right? Because you're gonna have, you can provide the feedback right up front. Okay. So it works very with the very well with the agile process. So ATDD is essentially part of the agile process. Okay. Uh, but there are you're gonna come across uh, another terms as well or another names for this uh, approach. So different terms have been used in this industry to describe the ATDD approach. Agile, uh, basic acceptance test driven development, um, and I'll, I'll explain you what, what, where, where, what it is, okay? DDD, specification by example, agile acceptance testing. Now, you are sitting with the customer, but what does that actually do, right? To improve the communication, right? And providing the feedback that so that requirements are well defined, okay? So what is that we need to do from the QA standpoint or the development standpoint? So that 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 I'll explain as what what goes in. You have a question. Yeah, acceptance test is usually what comes after maintenance. So acceptance test is done by business, right? Generally, right? After maintenance. After main, not maintenance. After, after development. before maintenance. In, yeah, after, maintenance after testing. After, yeah. after testing. So QA does you do your own testing. And then you give it to the users and users will do acceptance test. But here, acceptance test, you are working, basically you are the ones creating it, basically, and you're gonna get approval from the business. But and here the product is not ready. Product is it's not even there. It's just a requirement spread. Yeah. Right now it's a requirement spread, but you, you still are writing the acceptance test and get, getting approval from business. Hey, is it what you mean? Basically, and I'll show you examples so that it will make uh, more, more, more sense. But you have to do that effort while you are collecting the requirement. So business analysts will collect the requirement. You as a QA sitting on the table, you are, your focus is on the acceptance test, writing the acceptance test. Okay. Focus okay. is there, but it's yeah. not. Yeah, the software is not even there, right? It's, it's just, uh, you are just talking. About. It's like you are collecting requirements sure. based on what is accepted. What is accepted? Yes, so that's, that's a concept. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> okay, so I, I'm not going to go away. I think you guys understand the Agile process, right? This is Agile. We covered this one in, I think, session number four or five somewhere. Uh, basically, this type of diagram, right? So I'm not going to go over this, but this is, is part of the Agile process. Uh, okay. So what is that we do or how we go about the ATDD process or how do the companies implement ATDD process, right? 
uh, that, that's what uh, you know. So when you are sitting with the customer, right? Um, so there are two things as part of the ATDD process. Uh, there is a concept called acceptance criteria. Okay, acceptance criteria. So acceptance criteria is nothing but the requirements. It's essentially a requirement. So you can you document the acceptance criteria as part of your user stories. Okay, so you document the requirement as part of your user story. Now, what is the difference between this acceptance criteria based requirement versus the normal requirement that you have seen in our flow? Mm -hmm. So what the ATDD says, you have to write the acceptance criteria or the requirements in a certain way, in a certain way, okay? Um, certain format, so there is a format business analyst needs to follow to capture the acceptance criteria or requirements for a software, okay? So general guideline is so general guideline guideline is acceptance criteria or the requirements needs to follow basically capture what and not how. So there shouldn't be any technical details on how um, basically, but what is that business want? That's what we want to capture. Avoid how. It, it should state the intent, but not a solution, okay? Uh, a user can create or edit an account, basically, rather than a user can click on checkbox to edit an account, basically. Then that type of difference in the acceptance criteria. And uh, let me show you the example. Uh, so we want to avoid how, how user will perform the work. That is none of the, that shouldn't be part of the acceptance criteria or requirement. Okay, so let's let me show you the example here. Okay, so this is a standard format for writing the requirement or acceptance criteria as part of the stories. Okay, so any user story as part of that is user stories are created as part of the agile, right? The, Basically, so you should be writing in this format. You should always have actor who is doing the work. What is the behavior? What is that they are doing? And what should be the outcome or result of that behavior? Okay, so as an actor, I want to do something so that I can achieve something or so the system basically can perform certain activity. Okay, so here this in this example, as an administrator, I want to be able to create user account so that I can grant user access to the system. Okay. As a customer, I want to sign up for newsletter so that I can receive the latest updates. So it needs to follow this format when you are documenting requirements as part of the user stories. Okay. Now, if you look at the Airflow one and uh, compare, compare it here. So if you have to, if you have a loan calculator requirement, right? So what, what does it say? The loan calculator requirement says, loan calculator needs to work, uh, uh, basically perform loan calculation based on a predefined calculation. It doesn't specify who is doing the work, right? You are inferring, hey, this, uh, so if somebody has access in this some different uh, section, they are the doing the work. So you have to figure out a lot of things, basically, in that case. <clears throat> Right? I mean, otherwise, how would you know who is doing the work in the form, in case of loan calculator? You have to put together all the pieces together from the long document. But if you are given something like this as a dealer, I want to use a loan calculator so that I can calculate monthly payment based on a predefined calculation. Does it make, make it more clear or not? Yeah. Right? So it, that, that's the whole idea. If you do that, if, if the document requirement is documented like that, then the, and you are sitting on the table with the developers, so everybody has same understanding. Okay, who is doing the work? What type of load calculation or what what is supposed to do? And uh, what is the outcome? The monthly payment, basically, they want to calculate. So this is like more direct and technical. More direct. Uh, so you don't have to figure out a lot of things because stories are, remember, stories are focused on certain problems or small, small functionality, right? 
if, if you write the stories that is ambiguous, yeah. uh, then it's going to create a lot more issues when the developers look at it or QAs look at it. Okay. That's the whole purpose of writing the requirements in this format, standardized format. Now, there are good BAs and bad BAs. Okay. There are just like the good QAs, bad QAs, everywhere. Not everybody follows this format, even if they create the user story, because not everybody understands the ATDD process. But companies are basically forcing or, or basically training. Um, it's a transformation effort. It's a training uh, or, or the mindset they will change for people. Okay, But this is the ideal format for, that should belong in the user story. Okay. So the goal is team is understanding how the feature will work, right? From customer's perspective, <laughs> because the, who is doing the work, dealer is doing it, and uh, now they are able to do the work. Remove ambiguity from the requirement. Because that's the goal, right? Everybody is on the same page. A limited, uh, limiting developers to adding the only functionality that the user requires. Now, this is important. Okay? Because same thing, um, what QAs are thinking, right? Sometimes, hey, what happens if I do certain things? Same thing, developers will think, okay, if I don't have dealer, do I provide this functionality to everybody? They might implement that for everybody. Loan calculation functionality. If it's not clear, like they might misunderstand that. But if you have a if you have a clear requirement as a dealer, I want to do this, then they will only implement for dealer only. Okay. So that, that's the advantage of acceptance criteria writing in uh, this particular format. Actor, behavior, and result. And uh, what if we have to do that for lasers the users don't have any specific yeah. No, so then the laser document will be written completely differently. Mm -hmm. It will have maybe thousand stories. Artflow might have Artflow might have maybe 200 stories. Like if you have require each requirement, you can think it up as a create one story. Right? Uh, each requirement you can break it down. Laser saver, it's like four times bigger than Artflow, right? Number of pages wise. So you will have a lot more user stories. That project was actually over the, built over like a year and a half or two years, laser saver. Airflow was more like a six months type of project. So obviously it will have more story. But you have to write it differently. But when you are working in the IT world, right, there's sometimes third party companies, yeah, you, you, companies say, oh, we don't have enough resources, let's give it to somebody else. Right, and this is, let, let's hire somebody to build the system. So other company, will produce the documents kind of like uh, what you see like laser saver. That's what it happened with the laser saver and our flow. So we work, we build the system for other companies. And at that point, we need to have clear requirements. So that, and I guess that's the approach it was taken at that point. Now, if you go with the agile approach, you could have done that uh, basically same way, but the requirements are written differently in that case. Okay. Is this still as agile? This is part of the agile process. This is part of the agile. This is what when you see user stories, right? So you keep incrementing the story. Keep incrementing, adding the stories. Uh, so adding the product the owner. Or, adding to the stories. No, adding the stories. Okay. Because you want, uh, want to capture what business wants, right? Now you are refining the stories. Adding more details. When you say refining, you are adding more details to the stories uh, uh, as it becomes available. So as you have more and more... Go. You'll be adding more stories and also refining. Yeah, you have because you want to make sure a business might just say, Hey, we want to have this feature, loan calculation feature. But then you come back again, say in the second meeting, you say, Okay, now let's see what goes in, in the loan calculation. Okay, so, so as a dealer, um, you work through this activity and so forth. Yeah, so think about it as when you're refining the stories, you are adding the details, you're not increasing the scope. You're adding details. You're adding the details. details. So, for example, if you say, hey, uh, the dealer should have a unique franchise number is the story. You're adding the detail that how the franchise number gets added to it, but you're not increasing the scope. So, I still focus on the same okay, task. So, that's, okay. that's a story refinement versus you are adding a brand new story. That essentially happens friend over friend over friend. Okay. So, those things are happening in parallel. 
So product owner keeps collecting the product owner slash BA who is working with the business, right? They keep on getting more feature requirements uh, from business. But at the same time, team when the team, team has to start working on it, right? So they need more details, not just one liner saying, hey, load calculator, I need load calculator. That's not how it works. You need to add more details. Who is doing the work? How the work will be performed? What is the... What, how does the screen looks like and all those things that goes in the story sometimes. Okay, so they might design because developers are there. They will say, oh, this is, they'll do a lot of drawing board exercise. Okay, in the agile world. Every story, they, if there is a screen there, they'll just sketch it out while everybody's sitting there. So they will have a screen layout, kind of like a mock-up. Hey, this is the screen looks like, there's a text box and I'll have a calculate button right there and then I'll do that. They might put more details around it. Again, when you are writing acceptance criteria, your goal is not to put how, right? But sometimes in order to communicate with the customer, you that's where I think people deviate from the story. So you write the story this way, but you also supplement the design document right al along with that. Okay, just to communicate with the customer better. So when you are telling the story, where the details can you tell? No, what the acceptance criteria says, right? You are writing this way, but as part of the story, you might attach other artifacts like a design as well and everything as well. So you 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 are creating because you developers are supposed to design, right? Where where they're gonna put these documents? They will attach to the stories. You have to write your acceptance test. Where are you gonna put it? You're gonna put it as part of the story. Very good. So that when we look at when the business approves the story. They will look at okay. This is this makes sense. This requirement is makes sense. This design makes sense. This uh, uh, acceptance test makes sense, and I'm going to approve it so that you can develop it. So Harshal, this would happen uh, even before uh, the product backlog is done by the business analyst. I uh, like you said that this is like the stakeholder, the uh, BA developer. Everybody sit together and decide this. So this happens yeah. initially, right? Yeah, initially. Yep, yep. Uh, yeah, so th this could happen initially, but the design documents get attached a little bit later, depending okay. on. So if, if the story is approved by the business, they think it's done, then the business uh, designers have to put the design, right? So they, they will put that in. But if business is not clear, they say, no, I, I, I want to see the actual how it looks like. So you will put the you will pull the generally the architects or the lead developer, okay, one of the person. They work with the business analysis, come up with the screen design, and they will attach to the story. Eventually, these stories will turn into backlogs, right? Product then, backlog. then you, these are product backlog, but when the sprint happens, right? You pull yeah, the uh, everything in. Eventually. Yeah, eventually. Yes, yeah. you will pull it, and everything is right there. Then all you have to do is develop it. Or you you as a QA, you need to create sort of detailed test cases if you if you want to, because acceptance tests are there, but then you need to write, still do the manual testing. Okay, because acceptance tests are different. And I'll show you an example what it looks like so that you, you understand. So there is additional work, basically. You still have to perform. Um, kind of form related, but just curious, is there a difference between the software architecture and the software developer. I heard you mention two different words. No, the architects are generally they they uh, they are more like a planners. If you think at it, they the talk planning. about yeah. They, they are more like a because when you are looking at the big big, they they need to understand the bigger picture. Okay, architects need to understand the bigger picture. Okay, how this thing supposed to be built? What are the different components? Their system needs to be built. But when you, they define each component, right? They, they, they define overall. Okay, this is a web service. This is the web app. There is a database thing, and uh, within the web application, there are maybe fifty pages. They have to build, right? But how those pages will be built? That's where later developers comes in, because you define the overall, right? It's just like a blueprint. When you are building a house, you are defining a blueprint up front, and it shows okay, these are different components. But when they when they give the work. They hire different people to do the work. Electrician will do different things and those things. That's where developers come in. But they will have their own design requirements. They might say, oh, now we have this bigger picture. We know how this needs to be interconnected. But we still have to design the room, what color and all those details that go there. 
in into the room. So that, that's more like a detailed design. So there is a high level design, which is called typically system design. What are the different components and stuff? And then you might have developers might create like a low level design, which is called uh, LLD, basically design documents or design specification. For every page, they will they will write. It. Okay. Uh, so there are different difference in the details of the designs, but architects are they understand the bigger picture. Developers will only know okay how this page is supposed to work, how this uh, functionality needs to be implemented. But then second developer is working on second piece. They they know only that part. Basically. Okay. Now, everybody clear? Any other question? All right. So this is acceptance criteria. This is requirement, right? Acceptance criteria is nothing but the requirement. There's specific way of writing it. And there are some more details uh, that, that goes uh, with the acceptance criteria or requirement. Goal is customer's perspective, how the functionality needs to be implemented, or basically how the feature will work. Then comes the acceptance test. Okay. okay. So acceptance, you have acceptance criteria defined by a front, mm -hmm. but now the acceptance test comes in. Okay. So acceptance test represents some expected result from the system. Essentially, concept remains same. You have what is expected of the system or this feature, basically. What are what are we testing, right? Okay. So customers are responsible for verifying the acceptance test in reviewing test code to decide which field is of a highest priority and so forth. But ultimately, customers need to uh, approve your acceptance test. So business analysts wrote the acceptance <laughs> criteria. You as a QA generally owns, basically writes the acceptance test and customer needs to approve your acceptance test. Mm -hmm. Now, acceptance tests are also used as a regression test. Okay, sometimes it becomes part of the regression testing as well. Uh, and prior to the production release, when automated, when automated. Okay, so you write the acceptance test in a certain format, and then you start automating that as you as you develop the software and so forth. Okay, and I'll show you what it entails, what the acceptance test looks like and uh, how you can automate acceptance test. That's where the Ruby Cucumber Water Selenium framework comes in. Now, story is not com considered complete until it has passed its acceptance test. So if you, let's say the loan calculator, let's, let's say you have a requirement for loan calculator. As a dealer, I want to utilize loan calculator so that I can have a monthly payment, right? And you create, how many acceptance tests you gonna create? It depends on functionality. But it, I give you the loan calculator one, right? So you could have multiple tests, scenarios. Right? multiple scenarios, same thing. You have to do the exercise, same thing, scenarios, positive, negative, all kind of tests, right? But the way you're going to write acceptance tests are a little bit different than your test cases. It's going to be different than your test cases. You're going to write it into this format. This is the format for acceptance <laughs> test. Given when then given when then that's how it's called generally given when then so given generally includes precondition when is the actor plus action okay and then is what is the outcome what are you verifying what is the output what is your expected result that's what is in the then okay so, so let me it's like for loan calculator, if I say when a dealer does this much amount, that's correct. Then this that's is correct. the result. That's, that's correct. That's, that's correct. Right. That's right. Let me show you one example so that it uh, makes sense. Now, acceptance criteria plus examples. So these are acceptance tests are stated below, right? Acceptance criteria plus examples. So you can include data, scenarios, all, all different things. So you can be it, you can be very specific in your acceptance test. Okay. If I input maybe 1,000, I should get 30 back, 
and business say, yep, this is what it's supposed to work. This is how it's supposed to work. Again, same principle applies. Self, uh, what you have for test cases, right? Individual, it needs to be self-dependent, independent, self-explanatory, independent, focused on single thing. You cannot mix and match two acceptance tests in a one uh, one one test. Two different things in one test. <clears throat> okay. So, given I am an admin user, when I create an account, <clears throat> then the user should receive the confirmation. This is my acceptance test. Okay. For for creating the account. So who is doing the work, right? We talked about who is doing the work and what action they are doing in the when. So all the actions will need to go in the when. What is the expected output or what, what is the result that I'm expecting <coughs> for these actions? Okay. Same thing, focus on a single thing, right? So here, Bing search, this is an example of Bing search. Given I am on Bing search or Bing search page, whatever it is, when I enter search criteria and I search, then I should see matching search result. Right? It's a simple. Right? It's, there is no complexity here. You can write it. You, here I have two actions. When I enter criteria and I search. Now you might, you might write something differently as well. When I enter search criteria as IntelliX software and I search, then I should see IntelliX software in the matching searches. You can be as specific as that. Okay, so, that, so your test data, you can you can put that as part of your acceptance test or specific examples. Now this is specific or test by examples. Okay, this is called specification by example as well uh, or test by example. But everything is good. More details you put in, more more it will be better acceptance test so that you can communicate. The goal is to communicate with the business. Very good. And if you think about it, right, business all, all care about this type of test, right? Their tests are different. Their, their tests are more high level. They don't care where you go, click on it, and what, what button you click on is something. They, they don't really care. Can I get my work done? Can I get my business done or the process done? So when you look at this acceptance test, right, it's all about business domain and not about software design. So you shouldn't have click on the, when I enter search criteria and, and I click on search button or whatever. They don't care how I do the work. All I care about, what is my business functionality? What is my business process? Can I execute it or not? So all the acceptance tests should be focused on business domain, not software design. Roger, I'm telling you, it's the software design because you have to say that I want to- No, the test cases, test cases that you write, Test cases that you write detailed steps, they are focused on software design. Yeah. This is what you're gonna write in the detail. Software design testing, you are doing in the actual test cases, detailed test cases. But when you are writing acceptance tests, they are very high level, like this, okay? And uh, they, they need to be focused on the business domain. For example, in the user search criteria, when I enter this name like Bob, then I should see Bob in either first name, last name, or street name. Again, or anything in, again, it can be. So you can you're gonna see one Bob or multiple Bobs. Those are different uh, scenarios. So, we'll so you will have different different acceptances. Yeah, you 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 can do that. All those things, and actually those those data that you are specifying. Well, I'll show you an example of this. Uh, how this how you can when you automate. That data becomes part of your test data. Testing. Okay, so that becomes part of your test data, and you can actually uh, send it in the code, whatever you're writing in the acceptance test, and actually simulate whatever you created with the catalog, right? Those uh, username, passwords, and stuff, right? Everything you can flow to the and put it in a browser, simulate in the action. I'll, I'll show you the working example so that it will make more sense. Mm -hmm. But it, 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 you can include all kind of test data or data here, just to be very specific. Okay, this, is this something that you guys mean, like asking business? Is it, uh, yep, business will say, yeah, this makes perfectly sense and I'll approve the test. Okay. And uh, trust me, you guys will have to write acceptance tests 
if you are working on agile project because most of the companies are going towards this route. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna have you're gonna write both both ways. Test cases you will all always have plus the this type of acceptance test, specifically if you are working on agile projects. Okay. So if you're looking at agile projects, you know, so every um, phase, you go back and you sit down and you write the same. Not every phase. You, you are constantly, it's happening every week. Maybe the, 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 the product owner will set up like maybe recurring meetings with the teams to review what business has proposed as part of the, as part of the basically uh, features. Yeah, because yeah, it's a continuous because it's a continuous process. Yeah, continuous. Every week they might have to one meeting okay. just to do the product backlog grooming. Okay. It's called product backlog review with the team and so forth. Because you might come up with more questions and they, they have to go back and ask the business clarified or if business is not on the table. Most of the time business will be there when they when you are, when you are reviewing the stories as a team. Okay. Now, the overall concept is, right? So are we supposed to test before we build it, right? Remember, we don't have any software yet, okay. but we are still writing the acceptance tests before even we have a software, okay? So there, there are three concepts, right? As part of the, or it's a part of the process. ATD is a process, right? So we are writing the acceptance tests as part of the process. Uh, but there is a, another concept. Developers have been doing this for a long time. Okay, this, this thing. Developers are doing. I, I've seen it since uh, 2004, 2005. They are doing TDD for a long time. Yes. Writing the code before writing the accept the test unit test before they write the actual software code. So it's not a new concept for developers. For QS, it is. Uh, it's been around for like almost ten plus years now. Uh, this acceptance test type of concept. Anywhere Agile project is there, you are writing the acceptance test. Okay. So the whole idea is we're supposed to test before we build. That's, that's the whole idea. Okay. Now what the developer do? This is what the develop, uh, development team does. Okay. So they, when they get a user story, right? When they start coding, they will actually start right, creating the tests. Okay, so they will actually, it's a piece of code again. They will write the piece of code uh, to, to test out the feature which for which they're gonna write the code, basically. And it obviously test will fail because there is no code, right? There is nothing there in the code. It's empty functionality that they have. Then they will write the code. Maybe the test will start passing if they write the perfect code, right? If, if it fails, then they will refactor the code. But the goal is the all the tests should be passed basically by the developers. Okay. And if everything passes, then they will move on to the new feature, the new functionality, and so forth. So this is what the developers are doing. Okay. And they've been doing for a long time, since uh, 2000, early 2000. C unit, J unit, VB unit, N unit, these are the unit testing frameworks they've been using to write the unit tests <laughs> or automated unit tests. Okay. Um, now you have to, now dev QAs are following similar approach or automation testers are following a similar approach. Um, what automation testers are doing as part of the ATDD? Um, So BDD is a behavior driven development, right? There is another terminology here, BDD, behavior driven development, okay? So ATDD, BDDD, uh, those are two different things, right? ATDD is more of a process. Mm -hmm. BDD is a way of writing the test, acceptance test, basically, uh, as part of the ATDD process. So it's not like... BDD with that, yeah. No, BDD is part of, kind of like a part of the ATD. Okay, it's not so a it's BDD with client acceptance. Yeah, it's, it's acceptance test. Essentially, when somebody says BDD, basically, or acceptance test, it's all they all are acceptance test. 
but what, what, the way way you write it and developers write it, right? Developers actually write if they are using uh, Java, they they use N unit framework, C sharp, C unit framework, whatever. But you don't know coding, right? Or you so you're gonna write in plain English, all your acceptance tests in a plain English, okay? Because what we talked about here, uh, the test here, right? This is this is plain English. Known programmers can understand because you are communicating with the business. Okay, so you are writing the BDD test or behavior driven development test in a plain English, and it gives a. But the goal is uh, again, this is part of the ATDD, so uh, the goal remains same, right? What system should do from the perspective of the developer and the customer, kind of like what what is our expected outcome, but uh, what is focused. Uh, is focused on the domain, basically business domain rather than software design and so forth. Mainly the behavioral aspect of the system. Okay, that's the business domain. So it's the same as the business driven. Uh, there is no business driven. It's a test. Uh, what is it? Acceptance test driven development ATDD, right? It's part of the ATDD process. But BDD is very specific way of writing the acceptance test. That, that's what it is. The same way we saw it here. This is this is this is the way of writing the acceptance test in a BDD format. Behavior driven development format. This one is called BDD format. Okay. But the I'm going over this terminology because a lot of people will ask you what is BDD? Okay. It's the same as acceptance test driven development. ATDD, you can explain if you understand the concept. Right now, BDD has certain tools that are used uh, for automating the acceptance test, and Cucumber is the most popular one. Then that's where the Cucumber comes into play. It's a tool or it's a software program that can help you read whatever you wrote in plain English and then start executing the automation test, start converting into the automation. Okay. There are a few tools, uh, SpecFlow, uh, JBHAO, MBHAO, but this is the most popular. 90% of the companies use this one. SpecFlow is another popular one, but it works very similar to the Cucumber. Okay. It can interpret whatever you acceptance test you wrote in given when then format and uh, start automating that. So cucumber, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's not a food; uh, it's a tool, <laughs> right? So it's a command line tool for BDD or behavior-driven development testing uh, and so forth. Okay, so the tool will read your acceptance stats and then execute it, and then hook up whatever programming language and code that you wrote and uh, start automating it. I'm just gonna go quickly on this thing. What what is so when we talk about tools, right? Software programs, you have to follow the follow the ways of writing. Okay, because all the software, if you make a small mistakes, it's not gonna understand anything. Kind of like a Catalan thing, right? If you if you miss one line of step, tool doesn't know. You are the one writing the test, automation test. So you have to go and fix it. Same thing in the tool. If you make a typo, it's not going to understand. It's going to, so you have to follow certain specifications, special way of writing, follow the commands and so forth for writing the test. But the way you can organize your acceptance test is uh, in a plain language text file. So I can open a notepad. I can write my given when then get whatever statements, right? And I can call the file as feature file. Okay, so that is called feature file. Whatever I write, so there are multiple scenarios. So I, if, uh, if I'm writing the acceptance test for loan calculator, how many scenarios I could have? Positive scenario, valid amount, invalid amount, alphanumeric, whatnot, right? So those are scenarios I can put in the one feature file. So my feature file name could be loan calculator dot feature. Okay, I'm organizing my my acceptance test, right? 
But then I could have four different scenarios. One for valid loan amount, one for invalid loan amount, one for alphanumeric loan amount, one for whatever, or zero loan amount, right? Now, given when then, right? Each thing, each line is called step. Those are given, I'm on our flown page or whatever, right? Whatever you're writing is considered a step, okay? So you have to follow a certain way of writing it, okay? The name for this set of rule is Gherkin. So essentially you're writing the acceptance test in the Gherkin format. G-H-E-R-K-I-N, Gherkin format. Okay? No, it, it's, it's a way of writing the acceptance test. So there are certain keywords or commands you have to follow. Like given when then, if you don't write that. Yeah, those are command, right? A set of uh, way of writing, it, right? So you need to follow the rules so that software, software like Cucumber can interpret that and or execute your automation test. Our goal is to do the automation test, right? Is everybody under a way to Gherkin use or Cucumber use? It's a part of the automation testing process, right? So there are rules to follow. When you are talking about any software, you have to weigh right certain way. And I'll show you what these rules are on the next slide. So we basically write some steps in, in a file and then yep, yep. To Exactly, yeah, that's exactly what. What is Capybara? Capybara? Yeah, Capybara, like a, these are the web drivers. So Cucumber can be used along with Selenium, Water, Capybara, these are web drivers which so web drivers are nothing but you have to interact with the browser, right? So when you are running your catalog test, ultimately it has to open the browser and then do some work, interaction. Selenium, Water, Capybara, they are web drivers. Those are the ones which actually interacts with the browser. Okay. And also when I show you complete example, working example of the automation test based on this one, then it may will more, make more sense, okay? All right. The good thing about Gherkin, right? Any programming, you have to follow the rules. Without that, you, you cannot, your test will not work. So these are the commands. Good thing, these are the only commands that you have for Gherkin uh, or the Cucumber, so that Cucumber can interpret your automation or, or acceptance test and create automation test from there. So there is a feature, basically command, background, scenario, scenario like given, when, then, and but star and examples. Okay, there are different variations. Here. We're gonna focus on these three here, given, when, then. I'm not gonna go in details on this thing, right? You can read upon it. In our automation, we spend like actually two days on this uh, different variations. There is a whole other set of complexity that adds uh, this this command. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we, we typically spend uh, I think uh, almost session and half just on the Gherkin set of rules and automations. Basically, how do you create and what what are different variations? Kind of like a SQL, right? It's a it's an open topic. I mean, SQL similar way. You can do different combinations and different rules. But the important part is when you write Gherkin test, you need to understand how you can write this, basically, given when then, because that's the important part. Okay. So I think I already saw you. This this is a looks like a complete uh, one automation test that I have written here, or we have example wise. Feature is validate admin user access. So in a notepad, I could simply type this right in a notepad. Feature command. These are viewers are the commands supported by Gherkin, right? Anything. Uh, so you have they are separated by column, semicolon. What is it? Column. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So validate admin user access, right? So it explains. So this line, it just explains what the feature is about, or what what are we testing? What this file contains? What scenario? Then I'm actually writing my acceptance criteria here. You don't have to, this is optional. Okay, you don't have to describe, but here I'm writing 
so that I, whoever opens my file, they understand what, what are the scenarios for. So this is my acceptance criteria. As an admin user, I want to log into Airflow so that I can access admin functionality. Okay, so this is optional. Okay, you don't have to put that in. But just for clarity, I just put that in. But this is my actual scenario. This is my actual acceptance test. Scenario, as an admin user, I can log into and be able to access. Again, after scenario, this is optional. It just describes what is there, what is your scenario. So for loan calculator, I can say scenario, then say positive scenario or valid input, valid loan amount. Kind of like after your title, right? You are putting test title. That's what that's what this is. Okay. But your steps are here. This is what it will be automated. Okay, so this nothing, there is no automation here, but you need this keyword so that uh, yes. Cucumber knows, okay, it's a feature file so that I can, uh, it for conform, conforms to the Gherkin standard. Okay. Scenario, the when it encounters scenario keyword, it knows, okay, now it's a new scenario I need to execute or automate, basically. Now your important steps are here, you and I am on our front page, when I enter valid admin credentials, and I log in, then I am on admin homepage. Okay. If you have a second scenario, you can start with scenario again. This copy the whole thing. You enter say invalid amount or super user login, whatever you want to do. Then you will change what instead of admin credential, maybe it's have a dealer credential. Then I should sell. Then I shall see dealer homepage. Right. So that way you can uh, create a bunch of acceptance tags for login. Any question here? Do you guys understand how it's written? Now, this is a working, uh, this is an example, right? But I'll show you the actual working example uh, as well. But this is a kind of like a for your understanding. Given when and then, these are important parts. This is what you should be writing. And the scenario, that's all. And they can add any number of hands there. What is it? Yeah, any yeah, you can add multiple steps, right? Those are actions. If okay, you have on the end. And yeah, see, there you have to follow the rules, right? So you can do end, but start. There is no or. Okay. So you cannot say or in the because it will throw an error. What is that? What? What is that? So let me tell you. All these things, right? This is for somebody needs to read it, right? But essentially what the tool does when it starts reading it, right? It's the scenario, it essentially ignores given when then because tool doesn't understand what given is what. All they care about is this one, this one, this line, this line. So you can just say start, I am on Airflow home page, start, I am doing this because tool tool gonna ignore those keywords. Okay. okay, it's just for our purpose because we are reading it. So we are reading in some plain English. I could easily write the same thing with the star I am on a hard problem when I enter anything. As long as it's one of these keywords, it should be okay. One of these keywords, okay? One of these. Instead of given when, then I can just simply say, then I am on a hard problem. Who cares? Doesn't matter. Tool will ignore all those things. So basically, what you're saying is that we have to detail out the test. Like in, in this format? This is the acceptance test. This okay. is from the think about this is how user will test it, right? Acceptance test are generally user will test it. But you are writing as a QA, you as a QA gonna write the acceptance test based on the requirement. And this this is done up front. Mm -hmm. You you have to get the approval from the business or users. Okay. I think so this command or this um, type of um, Right, so it's probably um, uh, based on the user out there who is not, you know, uh, psychologically inclined, so they can read and that's something simple, like, you know. Yeah, they can approve it, right? They, 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 they will get confident, say, yes, yes. okay, this test will be passed when the software is built, then I, it's, they will, it will but reduce user's work, basically, yeah. user's work, okay? Yeah. But these tests are also used for automation testing. Okay, these tests are goal is to automate, right? Ultimately, so you can use this test 
that a trigger point for your automation. Okay. So a lot of companies uh, who doesn't have the automated automation, they stop here. Okay. So they, they but they, they want to automate in future. They will they will ask you to create the Gherkin scenarios, uh, different acceptance tests up front. Then say, okay, we don't want to automate now, but you can at least have the create this uh, test first. Now we'll automate maybe after two years, who knows? Like BMW, they are doing kind of like something similar. They are asking all the QAs to write the acceptance test, but they don't, they don't automate. They stop right there. Because maybe they don't have skill set, you know. Because you need the programming knowledge, Ruby, or Java, whatever, and then uh, automate. Okay. So let's do some exercise here. So I'm, I'm going to ask you, so you have this uh, acceptance criteria, right? Let's let's quickly write. I'll give you maybe 20 minutes to come up with uh, just one piece of paper. Okay, just close your computer. And don't look at your booklet because I think maybe we may have given you answer. <laughs> I don't think it's a, I, I don't think it's there, but uh, just uh, see whatever you can write based on your understanding so far. You are going to give us the 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 BGD criteria. The... No, you have given when then. Right? You have given when then. I gave you three different acceptance criteria, right? And I also gave you the scenarios, what you need to write for. Okay. So here you need to write the acceptance test for this criteria, right? But here you have two scenarios. So you need to write two acceptance tests for, for this acceptance test, right? And the third one, this one, make sure you write the acceptance test, come up with the scenarios and write the acceptance test for, for the last one. But do we have to write for all these three or just one? All three. Okay. <laughs> yeah, 20 minutes. You get 20 minutes. Do you want to go to the previous page before this one? Yeah, should, this page is there in your binder. Okay. Okay. No, but I mean, it says given when then, right? I mean, uh, remember, no design details. Okay, no clicks, no data entry fields or anything. You want to think through user's mind, how the user will test, no details about software, because it's not there, right? And you can just focus on writing the acceptance tests, basically, right? You don't have to repeat this, okay? This criteria is in your note notebook. Focus on what you're gonna write as part of the acceptance test.
Go, go ahead and write it. Uh, we'll review. What order is that? I mean, if you can understand that, right? Like... Another five minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
No, we'll review it here. <laughs> we'll review it here. That's the whole book. I mean, it's not. Uh... Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I that before. I have written it more. No, that's okay. I mean, uh, we'll review as a team. How about that? We'll review as a team, not individually. We are just fine. <laughs> no, we, because we want to at least say uh, how everybody's uh, understanding, right? We we'll just want to see. <clears throat> so for scenarios, we have to follow the feature for everything. No, you, I, I'm not worried everything. about you writing the feature or following those things. At least you have scenario written down. That's all it matters. Yeah, I don't want you to write other things because that's for the tool to work, work, work on to interpret. So. <clears throat> We are learning a lot of concepts. Yeah, you have to implement in practice, right? If you if you never learn, I mean, uh, then you will not even have an idea where does it uh, fits in, right? Because that's how it goes in IT. You figure <laughs> out when you go on job, yeah. other other things. Yeah, even if you go in the school, right? Then they are, actually prepare how, how much deep do we have to go? Um, for Gherkin, I mean, uh, you, you don't. I mean, as long as you, this is what they expect. The concept, yeah, this is if, as long as you are able to write the based on the requirement, I mean, criteria, you're good. And then, as you let's say you are working on a real project in a company, you are not starting from scratch for Gherkin. At least you have idea what what it is. And how you can write it. Now, you, are you going to write perfectly? Who knows, right? It depends on your understanding and how much you have. Um, but if you never really talked about Gherkin, you you will struggle. What what is this? How do I go about it, right? So. All right, so let me let's let's go and uh, do the exercise as a team, right? We will do as a group. So I'm just going to open a notepad here. All right, I'm just going to paste uh, this guy here. All right, scenario. We have two scenarios here and um, scenario, maybe another scenario. Okay. All right. This one, we I think we already talked about it, right? It's already there in the book. You are just changing who is logged in with that, right? Because in this page, it's very similar to this. Yeah. So everything is same except you are logging in as different user mm -hmm. and validating different things. As a dealer user, right? Instead of admin, so all it changes is as an admin, whatever and your scenario is given on our front home page, page, it will yeah. remain same. When I enter a dealer credential, and I log in, then I'm on our front home page, or whatever our front. What is it? I'm, a, I'm on dealer home page, right? That's all it will change. 
Okay, so I, we, I'm not going to talk about it, but let's talk about other other ones. All right, so I'm going to get rid of that. All right, who wants to go with the uh, explain or or talk about what they wrote? Yeah, I can go with that. Okay, so G1, G1 is going. I'll ask, I'll ask you for second one. Yeah, right. Okay, so go ahead. What, what you, whatever you have. So do we have to start from uh, given when then? Yeah, given when. Okay. So well, whatever you wrote, just okay. read it. Don't, don't <laughs> I'm think. On, I'm on uh, our phone website. I am on our phone website. So inter is going to be. Um... No, no, no. Whatever you wrote. Whatever you wrote, okay. given when then format only. So so given uh inter uh I enter uh German Honda and when then uh so I shall be I so super I, I write super user but so no 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 just tell me what you wrote. Okay. No no other okay. things. So read it what you wrote. Okay. Exactly so, what you are so like then uh dealer you uh so super user uh, can uh, see German on that as a result. Okay, so this, is, this is what you, what is it? We have one transfer credit card. Uh, I, I didn't get you, can you repeat it? I'm on our phone website and when I log in and enter search German online search results. Right. Then super user can see German online results and be able to access the record. Okay. So you, you have here, right? And access and the results, system. right? Okay. That's fine. Anybody else wrote it differently? Um I wrote it as um, given I'm on the dealer user homepage. When user homepage. Home page. Okay. When I search dealer by the dealer name, whatever uh, German Honda or uh, using partial name, that's what is the scenario. So, right. okay. using partial name, then I uh, then I am able to modify the dealer information. That's all. And I click search. Sorry. So I'll, I'll repeat again. I am on the uh, dealer user home page. When I search dealer by the dealer name and I click search. Then I can I am able to modify dealer information. That's all. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else? So, um, as a super user, I shall be able to log into our phone page. Okay. So, so you have to write it given when then. Yeah, that's given. So read exactly what you wrote. Yeah, that's what I was doing. Okay. I'm still waiting. Given. Start with given. Oh, oh sorry. Given as a super, super user, I shall be able to log in to our phone page. Okay. And search dealer by dealer name. Then, so that I can modify dealer information. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, as you can see, there are different variations here. Right, nothing wrong with whatever you guys wrote. Okay, you can still automate whatever is there because you have to build in the code anyway. Mm -hmm. This is plain English. Now, is it clear? So you you talk to the users and they they might say, okay, do I this is the Excel I, I'm expecting or what I'm expecting? The more details you put in, is better. So if, if it's very specific, right? So if, in this scenario. You and I am on dealer homepage. So as a user, I don't know how do I get there. That's in the design, and uh, we'll figure out later. But this is what business will expect. You and I am on dealer homepage. When I search dealer by dealer name as German Toyota, some specific thing, and I search, then I am able to modify or access or or, or I see here. I would say uh, German Toyota or German Honda dealer information. I I can be very specific. Because my output, if I say German Honda, that means I'm able to modify or access German Honda information. Okay. If I have to write it, I will change it. Instead of modify, I will say access German Honda or I see, or I then I see German Honda dealer information in the result. Okay? Recording, yes, a recording is there there. I mean it, it will always be there, but I want to make sure you guys understand what it is, right? Um, 
same thing this one is fine as well but i want to be very specific you more ex example you give what are you entering what are you expecting then it says good whether you modify it or excess is or whatever you do which is perfectly fine the dealer is the uh, the second one, um, you are supposed to log in as super user. Yeah, so this one, yeah, that's so then business will provide feedback saying, Oh, you're supposed to be super user, mm -hmm. not the dealer user. Because business will say, Yep, okay, this requirement is for super user. I'm not sure if you can do it as a dealer. So they'll provide the feedback so that you know, okay, this is what uh, the correct task is. And you will put it as part of your acceptance test afterwards. What is the approval? Okay, so again, it doesn't matter whatever you write. When I'll show you how you can automate it, right? Our goal is to automate. I'll I'll show you. Show you means I'll walk you through what what are the things you addis, you need to do additionally to automate. Okay, how about let let's go over the last two items quickly. Uh, anybody got partial match? Just one person. I did, but it's similar to the, similar the, to the yeah. yeah. But what what is the expected out, outcome for for that? What is the last step that so you should give multiple results when you type Honda? So so I see multiple Honda dealers right. in the result, right? right? That's all the differences, right? So okay, so that's good. Okay, how about the last one? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Lender. So, given of the lender, I can log into lender's homepage. Okay, G given I'm logged I'm in as a lender. logged in as a lender. Okay. Then, then what? Credit application. When I access credit application. Mm -hmm. then, Able to change the status. Now again, you need to think about scenarios here. Then, yeah. then I can approve the credit application. Then I can approve yeah. credit application, right? Yeah. You still have to wear your QA hat. Figure out how many scenarios you have. Then I can approve credit application, or then can then I can change the status to yeah. the again status is uh, status, right? You don't know. So as a business, I don't really care. I, can I access credit application? Can I approve okay. it as a lender? That's all you are carrying here. Okay. 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 And the second scenario will be reject yeah. credit application. Yeah. Okay. So, so th th this would be two different scenarios. You still have to wear your hat. High level scenario, you still need to break it down. Yeah. So that means that um, you can't say approve or reject because I did approve or reject. No, you, it, yeah, again, it yeah. has so to be very specific, independent of each other, right? Those are two different scenarios. I think this one is a lot easier than writing the detailed test. Yeah. Yes. Right? Okay. Because this is from a very abstract, right? I mean, this thing is uh, not much detail. Right. You are focused on business functionality. Yeah. Now, if, but you, the important part is you still need to understand business functionality in order to write this uh, test cases. Okay. Uh, business functionality meaning um, you, you will need to understand the process. Well, we need to write these in a, in a in a command, right? Like we need to command write in a command in a software, right? No, this is you can write in the Notepad or okay. tools like Azure DevOps. Oh, yes, okay. Yeah. Azure DevOps. Azure DevOps. You can you can do it, and then you can auto, if you want to automate. That's where you need to write it in a certain way. Okay. Which I'll show you next. All right. Okay. Okay. But you can document in Azure DevOps as part of the story. Okay. Okay. This, this scenario. So we we'll, we we'll write in this format in Azure DevOps, right? Yeah, Not you can. You can yeah. Type. No, no, no. So you you writing DevOps as part of the story. Okay. Okay, as part of the story, you can uh, provide this scenario and put it as part of the story, acceptance test, or attach as a file, basically. You know, write in a notepad and just attach as a oh, file right. to the story. Okay? okay. But your test cases you cannot write as a given when then. Okay. There has to be steps, steps, yeah, detailed yeah, yeah. steps, yeah. and all those things. Okay. You cannot execute these scenarios from the day on. 
Okay, not in this format. Okay. You have to have a detailed test case. Okay. All right, so everybody good? At least getting there? All right. All right, so hopefully this gives you some idea about getting, right, and the acceptance test, what it is, and uh, which is important. Um, I'm not going to go in details of how Cucumber works, what it is, but let me just show you what, what, what it, uh, what's the important part, okay? So generally in Cucumber, when you talk about Ruby Cucumber, Selenium, so there are two things. One thing is a business facing or um, non-coding, right, side of things, which is you are writing the feature scenarios and steps in a, in, in a, that's how you are creating, right? You are getting scenario and put, put in a file, basically, or files, however you want to do it. And you get the approval from the business. So, so when we wrote uh, this thing, right? So these are my steps, right? And you are writing in the feature scenario in this format, and you are getting approval. This is a plain English, basically. So it's a business facing. That's what we are calling business facing, this part. Now, when you are actually writing the automation, that's a technology facing. So there are additional things that you have to build in a code, programming code, whether it's a Java or Ruby or whatever you do. So this step definition, support code, automation libraries, and the execution, um, that's uh, part of the automation. Right, so this last part is the system, basically. So our flow uh, is there. Okay, so what happens is you wrote the scenarios in a feature file and then Cucumber will read those files and start exe start executing those line of code. So it, it will interpret the one file, one feature file, wherever you wrote your scenarios, right? It will encounter the scenario keyword and it will start executing the matching Ruby code with the step one, right? You have given I'm on alpha homepage, for example. Then it will have matching step definition, which is nothing but a Ruby program. It will interpret that line and it will execute Ruby code. Okay, interpret the execute the Ruby code, and then it will integrate like a whatever action it needs to do. So it says, so let's say your step is given. I'm on a hard floor homepage. Mm -hmm. Your goal is to automate that only step, right? So in order to do that, Ruby uh, Cucumber will execute the matching Ruby code. It might have to use the Selenium web driver to open the browser and then go to the Airflow homepage. So you will have all this written down in the code. Open a browser, go to Airflow homepage, and maybe provide the credential, whatever user you are trying to log in as. So everything is in code afterwards. Okay. And uh, that, that's what it shows here, the Ruby code execution. But the so web drivers are used to inter, uh, interact with the browsers, right? That's where Selenium water comes into play. And uh, so that works with the Ruby programming. Okay. So that's how the generally Cucumber process works when you automate your test case. Um, I'm going to stay, skip this uh, step definition. You can read upon it, right? All this part. But as part of the Ruby programming, uh, as part of that. So let me come to an example. So what I said is, given I'm logged in as admin, so there will be a matching step definition, which is nothing but a Ruby code again, right? It matches with whatever you wrote. Given I'm logged in as admin, okay? That's how Cucumber will find what I need to execute from the programming side. An implementation of tests is written here in the Ruby programming or Java programming, C sharp programming, whatever it is. And it will actually have a lot more lines of code here. Okay. But ultimate goal is automate the tests. 
in Ruby, you are, you guys understand it's a programming language, right? Mm -hmm. That you need. Um, and then um, you have web driver, which is a tool which drives, drives a browser natively as a user, okay? So it works with various different browsers uh, and so forth. Um, let me show you an example, working example, so that it uh, makes more sense here. Mm -hmm. So the tool I'm using is RubyMine. This is a development tool for creating the Ruby Cucumber automation task. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I have this tool installed on my machine. It's from JetBrains. Uh, that is a company called JetBrain. Just like Catalon has a development studio, right? Catalon Studio, this one has RubyMine where you can create your automation task. Okay, so as I said, you're gonna have a, um, you guys need to have a bunch of uh, feature files, right? Because I'm, I have these are nothing but plain text files, but you're writing in the tool instead of creating uh, uh, in a notepad. So what I've done is I have called one project called Cucumber Exercise this project, right? And I have one folder called Features folder, and that's where I'm creating my different files still for automation tasks. So I have dealer search, let me just open that up. This is my feature. This is my scenario. You and I am logged in as admin user and I'm on dealer search. When I search for GER dealer, then I shall see German Toyota in the search dealer. Okay. So let me take a look at another one, loan calculator. One. So feature, scenario, loan calculator. You and I am on loan calculator. When I enter thousand as loan amount and I calculate loan payment, I'm not saying I'm clicking on loan calculate button or anything. Then I shall see 30 years monthly. Amount, right? So let me just uh, give you a little bit more detail what happens here, right? So this is how you gonna write it when you are uh, write your acceptance test, right? But second step would be to write the Ruby code, which is a step definition code. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna start writing my Ruby programming if I want to automate this step. Okay, so I'm going to pull up this uh, loan calculator. Let's see where, okay, loan calculator step. This is my step definition written for loan calculator feature. Okay, so I'm going to open that up. And it has this given I am on loan calculator, right? This this uh, this regular expression or this is a Ruby step. So I am executing some Ruby programming here. You may not understand what, what this is written unless you know the Ruby programming. Right. Uh, but uh, essentially, it's executing for every line that I wrote, I have some matching code here in this file, okay? There is some additional code here, right? Um, basically, so I go from here and there is additional code, which is for loan calculator page. This is the actual code here. And I'm using water web drive. I can easily use Selenium, okay? But this is using water web drive. Okay, but essentially, if you see here, you should be able to interpret what this thing is. This is the ID of the element. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. and I'm doing some action, which is click or input something. Or when you record a test in Catalan, it was already doing something for you in the back end. But here, you have to create everything in the code. There is no record and play. Okay, so, so essentially, um, I'm, I'm getting some arguments, which is nothing but coming from my test data, right? This amount, enter loan amount, and I'm uh, doing the validate, verify payment. So what my test includes, let me come back here, loan calculator, right? I have 1,030. So this flows to my code, this amounts, and it will validate if I input 1,000 and click on calculate button, then it's expecting $30 output, okay? So that, that's the code, I mean, uh, you know, the way you can execute is same way. You loan calculator feature, I can right click on it, say run loan calculator, and uh, you will see it, it's getting executed basically. 
Just same, same way. Very similar way, whatever we had earlier. So testing started, it opens a browser window, right? All these things is happening uh, in the code. So I'm gonna stay on the second one. Okay, so here you can see it's uh, logging as a dealer, clicking on calculator button and they're executing. Essentially goal is the same, whether you write it in Catalan or something, right? Similar to user actions, but in, in this, Ruby glass, water or selenium, right? You have to write everything in the program. But on this one, it is the loan calculator, the Yeah, but in the in the in the code, uh, given I have a loan calculator, right here. That's that's all I'm saying yeah. here. But here in the code, I'm logging in as a dealer. So if I go here, log in, right? So load calculator um, here, right? So this, it has, again, this is object or programming. So I'm inheriting from login class, right? But essentially I am logging in as a dealer, okay? So there is a few other codes that goes in for the login steps, okay? So I have dealer username, password. They are basically stored here. And if I find this guy, the same credentials that I'm supplying. Uh, I mean, it's simulating, you have to log in as a dealer, right? Whether you specify here or not, essentially your code needs to do that. That's all. Okay. So this is a Cucumber, right? Uh, this is a Ruby, a oh, Ruby program. Cucumber, so I'm writing, so it uses a Cucumber library to read these files. Cucumber is a trigger point. So I'm running the Cucumber file. This is a file that is Cucumber connectable, but it can execute the Ruby code as well. So it's a kind of like a glue between the plain English task that you wrote right. and the Ruby program. Okay, so Cucumber is a tool that, that can glue that. Right. Yeah. Okay, so there are a few other exercises. I mean, there's login, all kind of things. You can write multiple scenarios here, right? Given I'm on Alpha homepage, login and admin user, then I can see that. Same thing, dealer, user, and I can do that. Okay. Essentially, goal is same. You have to write automation tasks, whether you use a tool like Catalan or whatever, or create a Ruby Cucumber, you're building essentially the same thing. Okay. But important part, you have to know how to write manually. You can't automate, otherwise you cannot clear automation tests. Okay. All right, any question? Uh, I mean, I'm sure you have a lot of questions on programming side and all that, but other than that, other than that, I think the Cucumber is the one, that's where we you stop here, okay? Programming side is a whole other area. If you want to pick up, it's, it takes some time, okay? But essentially, I wanted to get you idea of the framework, what the framework is. Just in case, if you want to pick up in the future, this is what you need to learn, Ruby programming, mm -hmm. because that's the basic for this thing. Then uh, pick up how you can write the automation test using Ruby, Water, Selenium, and different things. So that you can build the test from scratch. That's all. So I can write... So this is Ruby Kukumba, right? I can write water from a selenium format here. I'm Kukumba yes, format. yes. So I, I mean, it's a, these are libraries, right? Programming libraries. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, to interact with the browser. Okay. Because Ruby code itself cannot interact with the browser. Okay. Okay. Into in order to interact with the browser, you need to use some libraries, which is selenium or what? Oh, okay. Ruby code itself cannot do anything. Okay. All you can do is write programs. Just like Cucumber, you need Cucumber to have a glue between root, your test and the Ruby execution. There are different frameworks. That's what the automation framework is. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this one uses Ruby, but uh, you can create in Java. If you know Java, you can write the same test. Mm -hmm. Just have instead of uh, Ruby, you can do Java. Java. <laughs> what is it? 
Oh, this right, it, it just says these are scenarios and these are keywords. Um, That's all. You say run test here, basically. Mm -hmm. They run this scenario only. You can do that. Maybe run scenario. Yeah. So where did you provide the URL? Yeah. So when you run test, it, it executes the URL, right? It, it yep. the URL. Yeah, it is, it is everything in the code. So here, I have a login, right? So login. Uh, so I, let me open that up here. How do you, you have all of them? Yeah, the URLs are oh, yeah, so yeah. I have defined the URL in a kind of like a variable, right? So we had a catalog had a variable, we defined the URL there. I'm using the variable here called the URL. Then I have this constants or variables defined that has HP, HP. Yeah, and use the variable all over. So you will not see actual URL, but you will see URL mm -hmm. reference in your uh, different different places. Why do you have water and selenium? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Water. You can use either one. Water or selenium. Water is a library, selenium is a library, capybara is a library. You can use either of them to interact with the browser. But water is for Ruby programming only. No, the file before you need to require. Then so here, right? No, a little top. There you define the global variables. Oh, wait, here? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you need to import the libraries. So this is the way. Because my, uh, this pro project, so I can do the same thing in the Ruby uh, or Selenium. So this is the difference. So this is how you can open a browser in a Selenium. And if I show you another example here. Uh, let me see where do I have the code. This is how you open a browser in the water. So for... For students, this is a project for um, for the automation class, right? So this is a, so we, we we go over both water and selenium. How do you open and interact? It's a little bit different, okay? Different library. So here you see the difference here. B text field. This is for the water, uh, but if you go to the selenium, you're gonna see a little bit different here. B dot find element. Different commands, right? So the different libraries have different commands, mm -hmm. okay? So the, how do you interact with the page? That is a little bit different. So it says send keys, right? Here for the water, uh, selenium. If I look at the water one, it's gonna be text field dot set, set and click, instead of send keys, okay? It's just that a little different libraries, you need to learn different commands. Essentially, you are doing the same thing. I need to get handle on the element, text element, right? And then, Either I'm setting the value or clicking on it. Those are the two actions you are doing generally. Input something on the text element or checkbox, whatever HTML element is, and setting the value or reading it. That's all. So, you want help later, you are giving thousand and thirty in the cucumber file. Mm -hmm. How are you telling the Ruby file? Yep, you, you, have, you have great questions. So, um, I, th that's where you need to understand the code a little bit. But what it does is, if you, if I see here, so it, those amounts will flow as a arguments. These are arguments. So it will come from the those files because Cucumber knows how to interpret the file. And if you write it certain way, these are regular expressions. So there is another concept, regular expressions. So it will read those. When I enter this amount, it will come as argument and go to your function that you write in the code. Okay, so as I said, I mean, there is a cucumber is reading the file. No, this is Ruby, but cucumber is the one that is glue between Ruby program. But it's still the Ruby, still Ruby program file that yeah, Ruby program. converts the Ruby uh, cucumber into. Yes, yes. Yeah, cucumber is essentially can interpret. Yeah, glue, it's a glue. Cucumber is a glue between your text file and uh, Ruby code. So cucumber can read the file and interpret those values, whatever value is coming in, and pass it as an argument to your functions. And how that file is connected is background, not cucumber. Like not like you are not required like before you require some No, it's part of the cucumber framework. You don't have. You know, you don't have. Cucumber framework is part of the cucumber framework. So, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so 
that's all I wanted to cover on the framework side, Ruby Cucumber. You, you don't have to, I mean, obviously you cannot write the program here. So um, we'll stop at the Cucumber level, right? And uh, go from there. What is it? Given then. Yeah, because the, the, as I said, right? It Ruby just ignored, also, but these are built in function within the Ruby using the Cucumber library. Okay. That if you have Cucumber installed, you can install uh, libraries on your uh, in your project. Is that a gem or that? These are gem, gem. Cucumber okay. gems. Uh, I mean Ruby gems. Those are libraries. Cucumber gems. No, you, you don't need. You, as long as you can write in plain English like you wrote in the notepad and put it in Azure DevOps, you are done at that point. But if you want to automate it, yes, you need this, some type of software where you can write your automation task easily. But or like dealer search, I can't write. You know, search for a name and then look for partial match up. Is that match? Same thing. You can I do have it. to give the example and. Yeah, you, it, so that's why if you don't give example like that, then you have to hard code, hard code the values. Because you your scenario says you have to have some dealer. Okay. You have to hard code the values in the code. What you're going to look for or what you're going to input. So while we write right cucumber, we it, have to give the examples. The ba better you give the example, the more it will be more clear, uh, basically. Yeah, otherwise, you, essentially, you have to ex either execute in the code or you give it in the in your Cucumber test and flow the value. The, the, <clears throat> the whole idea is uh, if you build your test that way, right? So tomorrow I, I change this to 20 and I change to 60, my test will still work. I can run it like this, my test will still work. The whole, essentially, when I execute it, it will send in 20, 2060. Okay, so I don't need to change any any code if you have written down something like this, all your values. If you hard code it in the code, then you have to go and update the code. I open five different browsers. That's how it does. <laughs> That's how it does. But because remember, automated tests are executed nightly, and you don't even have access. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah it's a, these are done a automated way, right? These tests are so you are not you don't even care. Is that closing the browser in your code? Yeah, it's automatically closed. Yeah, it's automatic. Yeah. It's automatic. Yeah. Because you open five browsers, it has to close five browsers. We yeah. don't have control over it. Yeah. Well, it gives you yeah. two hours and ten minutes yeah. on the left side. Mm -hmm. So it says pass the test on the left. Yeah, it says uh, right. it, uh, basically pass the test. Pass. It's, it's a two hour and ten minutes. Um, I'm not sure why it says two hour and ten minutes. Yeah, it's a some other time frame. Yeah. But essentially, you can see here, load calculator is passed, basically. So your Cucumber report, you can generate some reports and everything, basically. Um, but the coding comes only after, while building the application or after this. That is correct, because uh, there is a certain thing. You write the Cucumber acceptance test before because you have to work. Yep. See, the TDD one, right? I showed you that circle. Mm -hmm. So your test will fail if you don't if you don't have it, right? Your yeah. all you have is cucumber test and it may not it may not pass initially. But once you have a software, you're gonna fill it. You need to know certain details here. You need to know the what fields, how do I interact with those fields, right? Those IDs. So you work with the developers, you start putting that in in your test. Your test may not work properly, but once you have working software, um, at, at the end of week one or week whatever, Can you're we, like, You know, once we give the Cucumber code, once we start building, we change the... Yeah, you change, uh, you fill out the Cucumber. Yes. That's correct. And that's we correct. incorporate yep. the... Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Yeah, that is a pretty straight so You don't have to do that before. No, you don't have to do before because you don't have all the details. Okay. So, yeah. All right, great. Uh, so that's all I wanted to cover for Ruby side of things and get you some idea so that you you know understand what it is. Uh, but obviously, one thing I would tell you: don't put the Ruby uh, and water and selenium on your resumes unless until unless you know it. <laughs> <laughs>
But cucumber suddenly you can put it on the resume because I'm sure you can write the test, acceptance test, right? Because Ruby, I mean, they will drill you on the, on the programming side if you put them. <laughs> Okay. So that's something. Unless you have some done working, uh, built uh, some order, or you know the programming, don't put. Okay. Because they can easily figure out you have not, you have zero knowledge on programming. So. Yeah, you know. Yeah. You know. You know. You know. All right, so let's take a like a five minute break. Wow. No okay. Java there. What? No Java. Java, no. No Java. No Java. All right, so let's take a five minute break and then we'll we'll regroup and uh, go through some Jira exercise. Oh. All right, set your legs and uh, we'll, we'll come back. We'll start back up. 10, 15, 7, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah.